Hi, this is Kim Kohler, and you are watching ECT TV, episode 29. Who's watching? I know there are a few of you. ECT TV stands for Emerging Creatively Tutorials Television. So my business is Emerging Creatively Tutorials and I show you how to make jewelry. Today I have a fun tutorial to show you. I'm going to teach you how to make this pretty simple pendant which you can also make earrings to match. In ECT TV episode 7, I showed you a ring, though it matches well. And after you make this, when you learn how to do this basic um, wire pendant, I have on my blog, which I'll link below, um, a couple of ideas to make this a little more interesting. So if you like kind of plain classic, this is what you want to go for. If you want to add some beads and kind of bling it up a little, then you want to click the link below and come on over to my website to get some more ideas. So without further ado, let's get started on the tutorial. So I'm going to show you what you need to make this pendant. This is kind of the simple version, the base of how you can make this pendant. It looks great by itself. But I'm going to put a link to my blog, and there are two other options to kind of bling it up a little more. You can add some beads, make it a little prettier, and express yourself more. Um, but this is the basic, and it looks great itself. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So for this particular pendant, you basically just need wire as far as materials. I'm using 24 gauge half hard round wire. If you would prefer to use a different gauge wire, that is fine. Um, 22 or 20 gauge wire would be fine. The look is going to be a little different because your wire is going to be thicker. Um, 24 gauge is really easy to work with. It's super flexible um, and you're not going to have any problems, but you probably wouldn't with 22 gauge or maybe even 20 gauge either. Um, you're going to need wire cutters to cut your wire and then you're going to need kind of the usual suspects for any kind of wire work for uh, as far as tools go. So you're going to need round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and then you may need another pair of pliers which can really be any kind of like flat pliers, um, you know, that don't have any teeth on the inside. Um, I'm using bent nose and it's to help me do my wrapping. Um, sometimes you don't even need that. This wire is really flexible. You could probably just use your fingers. Um, or you can use kind of whatever pliers you have around. When If you are using pliers to kind of wrap, um, you can use round nose pliers. However, you want to just hold the wire by the very tip and cut that piece off when you're done because uh, the round nose pliers will kind of put a mark in your wire and you don't want that. And then finally, you're going to need something cylindrical. So I'm using my handy ring um, mandrel, which is, this is actually a ring sizer, this is plastic, not metal. Um, but you can use a ring mandrel, ring sizer, whatever. We're just using it to wrap wire around. Um, this works great because it's tapered, so I can wrap up here and then easily slide off the wire. However, you can use whatever you have around, like you might want to use a marker or you know, big thick pen or something, anything that's kind of the size that you want to make. Um, so I'm thinking like a highlighter would work pretty well if it's one of those kind of thicker highlighters. But if you have a ring mandrel, that works perfectly. So let's get started. I wanted to remind you that this tutorial will also be in picture form over at my blog. People learn in different ways. I know a lot of people love watching the videos and seeing it done in real time. And then others of you may prefer to see it kind of step by step and take your time in between. 
if you sign up for my newsletter, I also send this out via PDF. So you can actually print it off and just take it right to your work table and, you know, maybe watch it through once and then you have the PDF to see the step by step. So to get that, just make sure you sign up for my newsletter. Um, if you're watching this in the future, <laughs> you have missed the PDF for this one. Um, but if you sign up, you'll get future PDFs, so you won't miss out in the future. And as we go along, I've been making volumes of the PDF, like, real cheap on my my website. So volume um, one, which is episodes one through twelve, you can get a PDF version of all of those tutorials, you know, kind of together in an ebook so you have them and you can print them easily or whatever you want to do with them. So all right so we're going to get started. We're not going to cut the wire off of um, the spool or this is just a coil. Um, we're going to work right off of it and not cut it and we're going to start wrapping around our ring mandrel. To start out we're just going to start wrapping around the ring mandrel and you can really make this pendant whatever size that you would like and I'm just you can see I'm just my wire is a little bit kinked up so I'm just taking my fingers and straightening it a little bit so it doesn't have those weird kinks in it um, and so you can make this any size you like I'm gonna wrap around size 15 because it's kind of the biggest size. If you want to, you know, maybe a little small pendant, you can use a smaller size. Um, and if you're using something that's not a ring mandrel, you're kind of, you know, stuck with the size that you have. But I'm sure it will be fine. And then we're just going to wrap the wire around several times. And you can just do this however many times you like. Two, four, five. Seven. Been around about eight times. So now I'm just going to cut off a pretty long tail. And I just wanted to show you. My wire got tangled up, but it was kind of tangled up before I started, to be honest. So I just cut it off where that was. But I'm leaving several inches here. I'd say that's about six or seven inches and I'm going to just carefully slide this off kind of keeping everything held together and so the next part is we're going to twist this loose wire now there's two loose ends this end over here which is where we started the circle and then this you know where we ended so I'm just going to twist this around in through the loop and back around and I'm making sure that I catch that end and we're gonna wrap around a few times and just kind of make it secure all the while holding this circle carefully all right so I went around I'm gonna go around four times just because it feels better that way and you know you can go with how it looks too so now I am grabbing my round nose pliers and we're kind of going to make a wide wrap loop. So if you've been watching these videos before, you know how to do this. I'll go through the steps so. though. Um, I'm holding the wire in my round nose pliers. And I'm just pulling this end down toward me. And then I just go around. So it's kind of between when it's still on the pliers. The wire goes, you know, between where we just did the wraps around the loop and the pliers. And you take that off. And then this is crooked, obviously, so I want it to be straight above the pendant. So 
what I do, and people have many ways of doing this, is as I go around with the wire one time, I just simply straighten the loop with my chain of pliers. And now we switch hands, or if you're right-handed, you'll hold this loop in your chain nose pliers. These are the chain nose ones in your left hand, and then wrap around a few times with the loose wire. And um, this is where you might want that nose pliers to do the wraps, or I was saying maybe you'd use your round nose pliers and just hold it by the very end. Um, this is 24 gauge wire, so it's very easy to manipulate and the, the wire is very long, so it's easy to wrap. Okay, then what I like to do is go back down the way we were wrapping before. And I'm just going to hold this in my chain of pliers. So back in through the loop here and around and maybe do it a couple of times on either side of the, you know, the loop we just made on the top. And to finish, just go around the top again. So I'm going to hold that with my chain is pliers and do the final couple of wraps. Alright, and then I'm just going to trim off the excess here. Use my chain nose pliers to make sure the end is tucked in and not poking out. And it really is that simple to make a pendant. So, now you just want to grab a chain or a cord or something to hang it on, and there you go. I know this is really simple, and that some of you will probably want it to make it a little more exciting. So, click on the link below and come over to my blog, and I have a couple of different options for adding some beads to it, and then you can, you know, really use your imagination and go wild and make whatever you want. You can make this any size. If you want to make a bigger one, you can find something larger to, you know, wrap and make the loop around. You can make a tiny one. Um, this particular size would be cute for earrings, so you just make two matching ones, put some earring wires on. Voila, you have earrings. You can make a matching set. Um, in episode 7 of ECT TV, I show you how to make a circle ring that look the, is this kind of concept, and you can make a matching set. So you could have earrings, necklace, and a ring if you like. So have fun. I would love to see what you're making. So come on over to my Facebook page at facebook.com slash emerging creatively tutorials you can like the page and you can update for me and I also totally invite you to come and add your photos of what you made there and get a bunch of support and great feedback and like I said make sure you sign up for my newsletter to get the future episodes in PDF form so you can easily download them and save them on your computer and um, print print them if you want to take to your work table and I hope you have a great couple of weeks and I'll see you in a couple of weeks with a brand new tutorial. So I hope you liked making that pendant and you come on over to my website and see other ideas and your creative juices get flowing. 
I just wanted to give you a little reminder, in case you missed it last week, on January 5th, which seems so far away, but really it's not, um, the next round of Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry will be beginning. And I have been celebrating by counting down the weeks on my blog. So I started with week eight. This past week was week seven. And every Monday, there's a blog post about creativity on my website. So it might be about way you can get your creative juices flowing again, or it might be an idea. This past week, um, I did weaving. So sometimes trying something different, even if maybe weaving isn't your thing, jewelry making is. If you try doing something different, sometimes it kind of gets you thinking in other ways that you didn't think about before. So I encourage you to come on over to my website. Um, I have a little free mini e-course that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry is all about. Um, you can sign up for that. It's three parts. Um, it's set up sort of like the weeks of the e-course are set up. So you get a creativity booster, which is something that will get you um, thinking out of the box and get your creative juices going. The second part are jewelry lessons. So I'll give you some kind of back to basics of how to do things in jewelry making. And then the third part is a jewelry project. So for the free mini e-course, that's how it's set up. For the e-course itself, that's how it's set up. In the e-course itself though, there are like fun little things. Um, there's extra lessons, there's extra jewelry projects. Every week has at least one. Some of the weeks have more than one. Um, all, I think all of the weeks actually have at least more than one jewelry making project. So I invite you to go check out the free mini e-course and if you love it you can get signed up for the e-course as well. You have seven weeks which seems like a lot. It would probably be a good idea. I know I hate to say this but we are getting close to Christmas and Maybe it's something that you might want to get for Christmas. So, look, I would love if you would take a look at that. Um, if you click the link below, go to the blog post and show notes for this show. Um, I'll have all the information that you need to easily find everything. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I would love to see what you made, and I will see you again in a couple weeks.